Hello, hello, hello. How you guys doing? Oh my God, I missed this Alpha Slice show. I've started it way back. I was interviewing nurses. A couple of nurses gave up on me and then I said, fuck it, I'm not doing it anymore. My time is so precious, but I would do it for one person and one person only, who is an OG in the Alpha Slice family, has been there from day one. <laughs> Hamis or Ryan, Hamis Wags, I call you. How you doing today? I'm good. Thank you for hosting me again. Oh my God, this is the third time and every single time I freaking enjoy it and people enjoy it. And when I post this on YouTube, people just want to know about you and your personality. You are a freak of nature. <laughs> hey, tell us I a little think, bit. I think about, that's a compliment. It is a compliment. Tell us a little bit about yourself. For those who don't know um, you, I bet everyone knows you, but for those who don't, tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm a Finnish nurse. I've been a nurse for four and a half years. Um, most recently working in progressive care for four years. And um, I love my specialty and I'm glad that now that I'm at the end of the immigration process, I will be able to have that specialty also in the US. Oh my God, you're freaking lucky. <laughs> <laughs> most people, you know, if they don't fight for it, they get med surge. Mm -hmm. So what, what did you get? Like, what is your specialty over here in the United States? I'm going to be working in a unit with progressive care and intermediate care patients. And that's similar to what you do, right? That's very much what I do here, but the patient material will be slightly different, but within that specialty. That's amazing. All right. Let's take you back, all the way back to when you first applied with Avon, right? I mean, come Why on, did... it was two and a half years ago. Yeah, 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 just give me, just a long try journey. To, try, I know, I know, but hey, if you go back to that time when you first applied with Avon and you started thinking about, start dreaming about coming to the United States, how did it feel like? Did it feel far? Did it feel hard? Did it feel difficult just just walk me through your feelings um it had it was always my dream to go to the u.s live work have a normal life there and i felt happy that i finally found a company that seemed very reliable based on their website and um, but when i started everything felt like it was very far away um and i had no idea what was ahead of me on this journey um back then i felt maybe i was a little bit naive uh but i'm really glad that i have gone on this journey it it takes a lot of courage a lot of strength but it's worth it oh my god it's totally worth it and when i started i was not certain that this gonna happen it, mm -hmm. it seemed a dream it seemed Can you see me now? Yeah. Oh my God, technical difficulties, man. <laughs> All right, so I lost my thought process, but um, what was I saying? Okay, so I said to myself, hey, Mo, this look impossible, but when I came to the United States, I said, you need to tell everyone about this. This is easy, this is achievable, and mm -hmm. you know anyone can do it. So what do you say? Do you say anyone can do it? Yeah, I feel like the, what I want to say to myself back um, in 2016 is that why do you doubt yourself? Why do you doubt this process? It's basically easy peasy. It's just the waiting and all that that you have to stay patient through. 
I know. Hey, listen, when you don't know your future, when you don't know someone that has done it before, then you have doubts. Mm -hmm. But I, I, as same as you said, I would tell everyone just freaking believe in yourself. You can do it. So if I want to ask you, what the are, what are the characteristics that you need to have in your personality to pull this off? Um, I think first of all, um, I'd say being, having initiative, uh, being able to do your research on your own, um, finding those answers to your questions, not just relying on someone else like, hey, can you do this for me instead of, you know, we have Google, go, go to Google, look for something. Okay. Um, Google, Google think, is your friend. When you come to the United States, Google, Siri, they are your friends. Yeah. Um, having that initiative, having uh, patience and strength, uh, because it's going to take a little bit of a toll on you. Uh, but, um, I, I, would say, I would say the same thing, Ryan. It's self-belief. You know, boost your self-esteem. Just believing in yourself, because if you don't believe in yourself, no one's going to believe in you. You have to believe in, your, in yourself first, then the people around you will start believing in you because people around you will start doubting you and saying, hey, like, why are you doing this? The weight, Trump, uh, politics, it's not gonna happen. Just, you know, stay where you are, start thinking about your future, get a house, get married, get settled. And you know, people start throwing those at you, but you need to believe in yourself and you need to bounce, bounce those ideas off your, off your chest or off your back because, hey man, if you don't believe in yourself, no one will. You're the first person, like you're, you're the front line, all right? So, and especially me, you know, uh, Finnish culture, people are very, uh, very humble and they really put themselves down like, oh, I'm not so good, even if someone is giving you a compliment. But um, having to, I have, I have, I've had to learn to be more, um, more self-confident because Americans have a different culture in that respect. Yeah. Like yeah. having my uh, job interview with an American company, I can't be like the humble Finnish person. I have to be more outspoken or something like that. Oh yeah, you should dive in. They head won't first. understand the Finnish culture. No. Oh yeah, definitely. You should dive in head first, no questions asked. You should be like, you should you should be outspoken. You should be like uh, charismatic. You should you should be an extrovert instead of like being an introvert and sitting like this and you know people asking mm -hmm. you questions. All right, we're gonna talk about your job interview in a sec. But first, Absolutely. briefly, I want to know your experience with Avant. You know, people has been asking. You're overseas with us, Avant nurses here in the United States. Our relationship with them has been awesome, perfect. But I know with nurses overseas, it hasn't been that way. What's your experience? Um, to be honest, I don't really have anything to complain about. Um, mostly what I would say is like communication issues, mm -hmm. like mass emails or delays in emails. But I feel that's understandable. Um, it's mostly what's com what comes from me being impatient with every step of the way. Um, I mean, I don't think, I don't have any issues with them all. Thank you and thank you. So for the people who complain, who send me comments, who send me emails and say, Avant are not replying to my emails. Well, chill down, because <laughs> you're not the only person. And they've got a lot of people to serve and they're doing their best. I know they overgrew themselves a little bit, but you need to take that patience pill. You know, you need to take that pill and chill down a little bit because it's gonna happen one day or another. No one forgot about you, but it's just that they have massive amount of nurses. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're done with Avant. Let's talk about the immigration process. What stage with the immigration process got you doubting or got you um, anxious? Oh my God, this is not gonna happen. Um, I think for me, because my first petition was denied after five months of waiting and not knowing really about the next step and how that next step is gonna, you know, succeed, how I'm gonna succeed mm -hmm. with it. 
um, having that kind of limbo in between being denied and having a new petition filed, that was kind of the shocking point for me. Mm -hmm. Tell me why was it shocking? Because I know, like if you are from Africa and you have a darker <laughs> skin, then you would say, yeah, I know. But you're from Finland, Norway, or Finland and the United States, they have good relations. Trump yeah. is white, you're is white, you're white. So what do you think? What do you think is a problem? Is there a discrimination thing or this is just the process? I think this is just a process, especially under this new administration or Trump administration. Um, it's just what it is. And I know, I know. Uh, and thank you. I and the I reason, always... Go ahead. Uh, I guess the reason had more to do with um, Avant because they're sending so many applicants and after the Buy American, Hire American, they are paying way more attention to hiring um, foreigners to America. True. I, I would say to people, hey, listen, chill, chill, because it's not a discrimination thing. It's not a political thing. It's not a religious thing. It doesn't matter what your religion you're from. If your paperwork are on point, if you've mm -hmm. done the homework, if you did not falsify documents, then that's it. You're gonna come to the states. If you your I-140 was declined for one reason or another, don't worry about it. Avant and the lawyers will take care of it. You just need to chill down a little bit. Don't doubt it. It's gonna take a few more months, but it's gonna happen by the end of the day. All right, let me see. Colorado. So you applied your NCLEX for the state of Colorado. I don't wanna go into the details. I just want to know your experience because I know Colorado are one of the fastest states ever to release. Oh, your I work. love it. <laughs> so tell, tell me a little bit about your experience with Colorado. Um, basically, because I don't have a social security number, I have to do a paper application. Uh, I sent the That's paper the down application. Part. That's the only down part is that you have to send a paper application. Yeah, but that, even that, that's not too bad. Okay. Um, uh, so I have my um, paper application. I have my CES report. Mm -hmm. um, and basically no bumps on the road to um, getting the authorization to test. And when I tested, I really, really loved the fact that I was able to get my license in 36 hours. <laughs> Oh my God, I remember that I, day. I still, I still don't understand it, but I love it. I remember that day when you were like, you were gonna wait for, did you do the Pearson Hugh trick? You didn't. I did, yeah. You did? Oh, okay. And you were waiting for your like unofficial results and then, oh my God, my license is here. But for the <laughs> people, just to give a little bit of context for, for some people who don't know, uh, there is an an Avant nurses group. I don't, I don't know the origin of that group. Actually, it's like all over the place right now. It used to be active. Now mm -hmm. it's not, but we're still there. We still support the people who are there. We still share some positive vibes. But you posted your license over there and I was, man, <laughs> that was quick. All right. So uh, your experience in Colorado, I love it. You know, when people ask me, where should I apply? I say, go go and apply for Colorado. It's easy, it's quick, everything is digital, except for the initial application. So I yeah. like it. So a little, just 30 seconds about mm -hmm. your Anklex experience. Because I started calling you freak, freak of nature starting mm -hmm. then. Tell me a little bit about your Anklex experience. How was it? How many questions did you get and how long did it take you to take the test? I think the reason why I earned my nickname is because I answered 75 questions in seven minutes. Um, but um, <laughs> on my own channel, I did my NCLEX special video where I, you know, tell other people to take all the time they need because time is not your enemy. 100%. But, um, and I took that from you. you. Time yeah. is not your enemy, only wrong answers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I think um, advanced NCLEX review program was rather long, but it was, you know, extensive and it helped me get through the exam in, uh, I guess, record time. <laughs> yeah, I have no doubt. 
Hey, listen, so, since you brought up your YouTube channel, you are a YouTuber. Your channel's name is going to be down in the description box or here on the screen, depending on where you're watching this. But your your channel's name is Hamis Vlogs, right? I'm not, am I pronouncing yeah. it right? Hamis okay, so Vlogs. Hamis, Hamis Vlogs. And what do you talk about? What do you talk about on your channel? Um, basically, I'm documenting my journey from Finland to America as a registered nurse. Um, I wish I've me, done that. I, wish <laughs> I started that. a couple of months before I took my NCLEX. And, uh, oh man, I've been trying to uh, film an update for like weeks now, but I've yeah. been running out of time and hopefully I can get something next week. Yeah. Hey, people think that this YouTube thing in social media, it's easy. It nah. is freaking hard. Film, sit down and edit for three, four hours. If you're a beginner, you're gonna sit for 12 hours. I used I used to spend 14 hours editing a single video. Yeah. Now it takes me two to three, four hours maybe if I'm like trying to do a cool edit, but it takes a lot of work to put content for international nurses or nurses all over the United States. Cause like on my channel, 50% of who follow me are from the United States. So to put to be able to put content, it takes a lot of work. I hope people appreciate it. Go subscribe to Hamis Vlogs. I'm gonna put the link down in the description box. Check it out. Give her some love and ask her questions. Take advantage of every single person online and ask as much questions as you can because you know me, Ryan. We will reply to every single comment. We just want to help you guys. All right. So, so you said your next video is coming in like a couple of weeks or a week or? I'm hoping to upload next week. All right, bye. Hey, you're coming to the States in four weeks, right? Yeah, it's gonna be more epic. Yeah, we need, we need a video before you leave and make sure that you document your journey oh, yeah. on the way to the States. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. All right, I'm gonna ask you real quick about you know, you got your US visa, right? Let's let's take a couple of questions from the crowd. Someone is asking me, I don't know why the name's not displayed, but they said, congrats, um, Hamis, uh, you finally made it, happy for you. How long from the time the I-140 approval to the exit interview? Let's answer this first. Um, so with my second petition, it took me um, about almost, Six months? Yeah, all right, but six months is fair. Um, and let's say, because from the I-140, when it gets approved, it goes to NVC, and then you apply for DS-260, and, and then they send you an email, and it's a couple of months later, and then you sit for your interview. Mm -hmm. All right, so she's asking, can you share your exit interview experience and possibly the questions that you were asked? Uh, my experience with the exit interview, <laughs> oh, where should I start? There's the security um, with the Finnish consulate. I was there waiting alone. <laughs> um, um, I was called to the desk. I handed in my original documents. I went back to the lobby. I was called in by the consular officer and we had a little discussion. Check. <laughs> yeah, maybe like 10 minutes. It was very relaxed. He was a funny guy. Um, he was typing a lot <laughs> and I was reading the label off of a hand disinfected. <laughs> but um, basically it was like 10 minutes. He was asking questions about education, work experience and mm -hmm. whether or not I have a license in the US. Mm -hmm. Very simple, so very straightforward questions. Basically, just to make sure that I'm the person who I claim to be on True. paper. So if that's what that's I tell people, do your case, not, no problem. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I tell people: do not freak out. You know, the the exit interview with the counselor. It's just basic questions about your mm -hmm. experience, your degree, are you a nurse? Where do you where where you used to work? <clears throat> Excuse me. And do you have a job when you go to the states? And your license, stuff like that. Easy peasy. And then. If you don't have any problem with your with your papers, they will say, okay, congrats, you got the visa, right? What happened yeah. in your case? Was it like well, that? Well, um, 
on that same day before my interview, I was supposed to pick up my medical exam results. They were not ready yet. And I made sure um, I wanted to be certain that they won't be ready before I leave the physician's office. So I went to the embassy without them and they understood it. I knew I would be put into administrative processing. Uh, mm -hmm. A couple of days later, because I had epic training, I couldn't go there during office hours. A couple of days mm -hmm. later, I was able to pick up my medical exam results, bring them there, and maybe it was the weekend, maybe four days later, I was issued my visa on World Mental Health Day. <laughs> Amazing. So did they, did they call you and break the news to you, or what happened? Um, they sent me an email, and I was curious why I need to pick it up, because I thought I had registered for delivery. I was wondering, uh -huh. what's up with this? Why do I have to go there? But um, I got to the uh, door and, you know, presented what I, why I'm there. And some guy comes out a couple of minutes later and he had a stack of papers this high, three and yeah. a half kilos. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> uh, up until then, they only talked about my passport with the visa and the sealed envelope. What's all this paper for? Yeah. So you take this sealed envelope with you in your hand, in your handbag and or backpack, and you take it to the you know customs and borders here in the United States, and you give it to the first officer you meet. You yeah. know when you stand in line and you want to board in at the customs, then they're gonna ask for the, for your um for your paperwork, and you're gonna give them this this folder folder, and then they will stamp your passport. You're gonna sit in a room for like an hour or so. And then when you're sitting there, you're saying, oh, my God, what's happening? It's taking them too long. And then they will come to you, give you a piece of paper, sign it, and you're good to go. And then you'll meet your avant people on the other side. Yeah. So just expect that. It's it's a long way, but it's it's it's. I was just it. surprised by the amount of documents that I need to carry with me. Oh, yeah, yeah that, that's a lot of documents. And then you will meet, you know, Avant, they have a good thing where they put everyone on the same plane. So you and all the Avant nurses on that batch coming from like Philippines, the Middle East, um, Europe, you'll be you'll meet on the same plane and you'll come to the United States. So you'll be able, and they will get, uh, they will send you the emails of everyone, like Facebooks and stuff, so that you can connect with them and you know, basically, don't feel that's alone cool. on the plane, and that's cool. <laughs> All right, let me take another question. How was your experience about I one forty? I guess we we already answered that. Let's see. How long did it take them to file your petition? So the, how long did it take them the first time after you passed your NCLEX, and then the second time? Um, the first time it took four to five weeks to file the petition. Um, after my first petition was denied, it took um, 30 to 45 days before the next one was um, filed. There's a funny question here. We were discussing it before we, we, uh, we went live, but let me see. Um, he's a new subscriber. Um, I, I don't see the name here, but I know him. He said, can you visit Egypt, Mr. Mohammed, to take meeting with person who is interested to travel and work in the United States or in America? <laughs> Dude, I'm not a staffing agency, but thank you for the popularity. <laughs> yeah, no, no way. You know, when you come to the United States, people ask me, and my mom is here. Um, a lot of people know that. My mom is here and my mom asked me, hey, when are you going back to Lebanon? And I say, why in the hell Am I gonna go back to Lebanon? If I wanna take a vacation, I'm gonna take a vacation to Alaska, um, Denver, Colorado, mm -hmm. see the mountains here and there, but go back to Lebanon? That's crazy. All right, uh, let's see. There's another question here that says, how long did, the, oh, we, we answered that. So what stage did you need the IELTS? Those are basic questions I know, but at what stage did you need the IELTS? Uh, because I applied with uh, Colorado Board of Nursing, I needed it for my um, credentials evaluation report. So basically for the CES report. So initially, first stages, you need to take your IELTS to apply for the CES report, right? 
Basically, IELTS was the first thing that I did with Avant. People, listen, I, I'm telling you, I have a fair amount of people who follow me and, you know, from the Middle East, recently from Egypt, India, and people ask me this question. They try to go around, you know, their, their, uh, their English test. And I say, it's not, it's not just about the, like, the paperwork. All right. You need to improve your English to be able to communicate with the American population, with the patients, with the community. If your English is bad, trust me, you will lose your job. And there was this one Filipino nurse. He's not from our agency. I think he's a direct hire who was in our hospital like a year ago. And literally, the charge nurse told him, do not give the Lasix. The patient has low potassium. He went ahead and gave the Lasix because he didn't understand her English and he got fired, right? He, he didn't lose his license, but he got fired. So it's basic, just improve your English. And people ask me, how can I improve my English? Just, Ryan, you tell me, how do you improve your English? Oh, study. <laughs> um. Basically, um, I've, I've, I've always been really mastering English since I was a child. I had a <laughs> neighbor who I wanted to compete with, with everything. <laughs> he was a good motivator. But basically, since I was a child, I've been watching, um, you know, TV shows in English uh, without the subtitles. Thank you. You know, I tell people, it's not rocket science. Watch movies in English listen to podcasts in English. I mean, everyone has a phone on them. Just go, I, I literally made a video. Hey, listen, go to the app. There's an app called Podcast. Click it and choose whatever podcast you want. Just type football, just type soccer, just type immigration. Tons of podcasts will come up. Just click one of them, listen to them over and over and over and try to understand what they're saying. That's one thing. Another thing I say, hey, record yourself talking and then listen to yourself and say, oh, my God, why do I talk like that? I need to improve that. You know, like that word, I'm not pronouncing it right. And it's the same thing with me. That's what I did. I used to stand in front of the mirror, talk to myself, record myself and then listen and improve. I used to say comfortable, comfortable. And then mm -hmm. I said, no, it's comfortable. So I tried to improve myself. I messed up. So many times, but then it becomes a habit. I tell people you need to write, just write daily, and then you will improve your you, you improve your writing skills. Speaking, go to those Facebook groups. I tell go to Facebook, type IELTS speaking, tons of groups will come up, and you bet when you join a group, I'm the one who's gonna approve you because I'm a member of every single one of them. Just go ahead join there are a lot of activities a lot of speaking partners that want to improve their english and you just you know communicate with someone and maybe skype maybe whatsapp video you know whatever the case might be but there is a hard work that you need to do so stop what's that word pro 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 procrastinating oh that's that's it okay <laughs> so i'm trying to improve my english hey this is a new <laughs> word that i learned i'm trying to improve but i'm telling you how was your job interview? That's another question people ask. Um, I had my job interview a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we were supposed to do a Skype, you know, with the video and audio, but yeah. the hospital couldn't get it to work. So after like 30 minutes, we moved on to a conference call. Avon was listening on the line, but basically um, I wasn't exactly prepared to answer so many questions that where I have to reflect on myself. Uh, I, mean, I mean, those questions like, uh, give me an example how you handled in an aggressive patient. Uh, give me an example of how you deal with a um, co-worker who was behaving inappropriately. It was basically, the questions were only those questions. Except I know, listen. For the first question, tell me about yourself. <laughs> I know. And this is a very important question. Tell me about yourself. Don't underestimate that. I made a couple of videos about like interviews, but do not underestimate that. But yes, they will ask you questions that will target your behavior. 
how you're going to behave in that situation or this situation. And, you know, just tell me what's the weirdest question that you had. And then I'm going to tell you what's the weirdest question I had on my interview. Um, I don't think I had any weird questions. No, I had a weird question that I stumbled. I didn't know how to answer it. And they asked me, tell us about a time when you used your listening skills to solve a problem. And I was like, what the hell? And you know, my interview was a video, but the yeah. whole time the laptop was directed at the ceiling. <laughs> so I felt like I'm upside down. I was sweating, I was anxious, but hey, I was prepared and I pulled it off except for that single question. And that's fine. If you don't yeah. know a question, the way I handle it, I said, this is, this is a tough question. And I literally do not have anything in mind to give you an example, but I know that I'm a very good listener and I listen as twice as I speak because I've got two ears and one mouth. <laughs> and then they, they said, it's fair enough. So let's see. Um, been there confirmation looking forward for the video to so people are looking forward i'll put that comment looking forward for your video from finland to usa make sure i made one video right you watched it i believe so make yeah. sure you do yours i really uh, need to get some great b-roll oh yeah you know b-roll and music and everything I, my video is poorly edited poorly shot <laughs> i didn't know anything about filming I just knew that I need to put myself out there on social media so that people will know about this. So uh, someone is saying, hey, Hamis, do you have a paper license from Colorado? Um, Colorado only sent me a, an email. Um, my email has the you know, PDF document with my license. And if I want to, there's a company in the US that will laminate the license into a credit card style card. Yeah, basically all the United States, now there's no paper license. They will not send it to you in the mail. Even when you re you renew your license, they will not send you a paper license in the mail. It's all email and you do not need to present your license to the, like to a new job when you go. You don't need to do that. You just present your driving license and you are exposed. They will know everything about you. That's it. So they can pull yeah, it off. They, the they can look up the license on nurses.com. Yes, they can. They can. Step, step to the modern times. Yeah. So someone is saying Finland is a great country and it's the dream to millions around the world to immigrate there. The question, why do you prefer to leave Finland to the United States and what makes the United States a preferred destination? Um, this is a difficult question. I don't think... Because um, I know. Hey, Ryan, you've got everything you need in in, um, in Finland, right? Yeah. You've got the yeah. technology, the people, the, the, you know, I don't know about the respect of your profession. And I know, mm -hmm. I don't know about like the wages and how fair are you in comparison to other like professions? But tell us why why you're leaving uh, Finland and going to the states. Um, I think one point is um, what I I subjectively feel that we have less respect for nurses here than in the U.S. Um, in the U.S., I'm also seeking more competition or more career opportunities within the nursing field. Mm -hmm. um, I, we, I feel that there will be more opportunities to further educate myself with more certifications and more advanced degrees. Um, but basically what I'm really bummed about in Finland is that fact that, you know, if I have a colleague who is, you know, 65 years old, basically about to retire, mm -hmm. um, she will earn like, 200 euros about the same in dollar us dollars 200 dollars mm -hmm. more per month than an entry-level nurse That's what is the factor that will motivate a nurse to continue to educate herself or himself 
uh, continue to do everything better and better every day. No motivation, no, nothing. Yeah. Hey, you know when people say that, what do I say? I say, what do you have to lose? Yeah. This is the golden era for nurses to come to the United States. I would say, I, I mean, I know shortage of nursing is gonna be forever, but that's my feeling. And I know a lot of people will say the same thing. The next two to five years are the golden era for you to come to the United States. Mm -hmm. So why not work on this, come to the States, earn your whatever green card or like citizenship and whatever, and you can always yeah. go back. Yeah, Five years, I mean, for, like, for me, absolutely, because it's Finland. I can always go back and I can always, you know, be happy. Um, I mean, if I had to go back to Africa, Afghanistan, it would be different. Oh, I mean, I mean, I've never had an Afghani on my channel trying to seek immigration. I don't know why, but you know, people from Pakistan, from India, um, from Africa. I mean, you can always go back. It's not a big deal, but you cannot you always, always come to the yeah. United States. Yeah, but you cannot always come to the United States. Yeah. Just work on it. Put the hard work. It's totally worth it. I'm telling you, if I look at myself a year and a half ago, and I look at myself today, and I see the amount of money I earned a year and a half ago when I first came to the States, and now the amount of success in my career, in my, like, in my, in my hospital, in my social media, in the community, how many people do you think were able to participate in making videos for the police department of their city. I'm the videographer of the police department in our city. There's no event they're not inviting me to. They're, I mean, it's it's amazing. And I made a video about this, like the yes theory. You need to say a lot of yeses if you want to succeed. It's not all about the money. It's about giving back to the community, right? It's, uh, I just want to say, it has been amazing, an amazing journey. There's always something exciting every single day. You wake up looking forward to the day, looking forward to live and breathe. It's, it's way different. I've never thought about, you know, I was never happier and I've never thought about excitement that I want to wake up the next mm -hmm. day. But I, I, feel like your, I feel like your relationship with the PD in Champagne is a great example of how nurses are respected, how um, you know the community comes together. Listen, I'm telling you, if I go out of work, I work till like 5.30, right? So there's still sunlight. It's like two, two and a half hours till sunset. If I go and do my errands, like do some groceries at, at Walmart and people see me with my scrubs, honestly, Honestly, and I, I'm not lying. At least two to three people will stop me just to say, thank you for what you do. Yeah. That's it. And then they walk. It is freaking beautiful. The, the amount of respect that you get, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm telling you, like here, the community, they really love nurses. Way more than doctors. They really yeah. love nurses. They prefer to call to the hospital and talk to a nurse over <laughs> calling to the hospital and talking to a physician, right? Uh -huh. All right, let me see. Another comment saying, hey, Ryan. Wow, happy to watch this. Congrats. Thank you for being here. Too bad right. we can't see the names. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm not sure why. But I've never used this application for a while now. And... Yeah, technology, you know, me and technology. <laughs> All right, so um, where are you going? Where's your destination? Uh, my job is in Toledo, Ohio. Oh my God, how far is Ohio from Illinois? Um, I think it was like three to four hours to your place. Three to four hour drive, right? Yeah. Hey, we're gonna make it one weekend. <laughs> we're gonna make it we're gonna plan it we're gonna make it we're gonna make a live video you and me you're gonna meet the family and you're gonna love it just right, this morning I, I was actually thinking about surprising you <laughs> you know calling a manny like you know 
uh, make sure that Mohammed is not doing anything special today. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be exciting. I'm telling you, it's gonna be exciting. I mean, some people come here to Illinois, and I say, "Hey, yo, let's meet, let's let's chat, let's make a video." And I'm telling you, I'm. Am I back? Welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I, I mean, I don't know if you guys heard me, but I say, you know, when when people come around to Illinois and they, they're passing by Champaign or they are in Chicago and I say, hey, let's meet, let's talk, let's chat, let's let's give motivation to each other. Because I, I get motivated as well. And I'm freaking busy man. But mm -hmm. I always make schedule and make time for another you know subscriber alpha slicer whatever you want to call him or her and then you know like the other day i was in in uh pittsburgh and i was coming back to chicago and i know a lot of people in chicago and i said hey yo let's meet and you know people start saying oh like i don't have a car i i'm on duty i'm this i'm that you know i said okay whatever but you know, so I, I've met some people, and they have been amazing, and I love it. You know, every single time I meet someone, they say, "Oh my God, like you are on YouTube the same way you are in person." I try, mm -hmm. I try to freaking motivate the hell out of them, so I make sure that they get motivation, they get all the secrets, you know, to success. And that you know, short meeting that we get and they get pumped for a year. I've got someone mm -hmm. who keeps sending me his progress. Oh, listen, Mo, I did this. Listen, Mo, I did that. And that's mm -hmm. what I like about people who are proactive, who needs to win, who needs to succeed. And not just say, oh man, I wanna go to the States, but I'm just chilling. Anklix is hard, IELTS is hard. Mm -hmm. the, the, the process is long. I don't wanna do it. Shut the fuck up, man. Just, just I Just do it. <laughs> either do it or stop talking about it, all right? All right, Ryan, we're coming up to 45 minutes right now. I want mm -hmm. you to, what do you wanna tell my followers by the end of this? Um, this process, it's, it's gonna take patience, but it's not as hard as you think it is. Uh, you know, it, it will be, it will, it will feel, difficult in that time but when you get to the end it will feel like you have just flown through it um i know but and you, I just, say, you just have to do it I there's know. no one else to do it you have to do it yourself 100 percent. and i just want to say congratulations you had your first nephew nephew a few weeks ago oh he's so adorable yeah congrats <laughs> on that you're gonna miss it. <laughs> oh yeah. It's hard to leave. It's hard to leave. I'm telling you, when when it's time to like pack your bags, make sure you have everything, your ticket, your passport, you know, everything is on point. You're gonna say, Oh my god, I don't wanna leave. Just give me a few more weeks. I'm telling <laughs> you, as soon as you jump on that airplane, you start thinking about the future and nothing but the future. So I would like to thank everyone for being here for watching this long if you truly watch the whole five, 45 minutes please drop a comment if you're on youtube drop a comment like the video share it because that will help this channel grow that will help more people get to know about us about what we're doing the value that we provide and make sure that you go to ryan's channel hamiz vlogs it's gonna be the first description down subscribe hit that bell Give her some love, drop comments, ask questions, watch her videos, watch the first video, and then go watch the last and see the progress and get motivated and influenced. Ryan, thank you very much. It has been a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. 
you know, interviewing you. And I look forward for you sitting here by my side <laughs> and doing this interview live to all the people telling them this shit Thank is you. real and it can happen. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you. All right. Love your faces, guys. Until next time, don't forget, be an alpha slice. Just do mm -hmm. it. <laughs>